I'm the founder of a company called BIT, B-I-T-T, and we're out of the small island nation of Barbados in the Caribbean. And one of the things that we did as an organization, uh, one of the things that we did as an organization was focus on a protocol layer to build on top of the next generation of central banking. So a little bit about my background. Um, I have a long history in the blockchain uh, development and operational world uh, as early as 2010. So I'm one of considered to be one of the veterans. And um, I have a background and an education in network security and cryptographic systems. So from day one, I had a very deep appreciation for network protocols. And I use the word protocol because it's quite the, uh, I would say the most important feature of the blockchain. Um, and one of the things that we need to understand about a protocol, it's a standard of communication between two dissimilar devices. Kind of like TCP IP, uh, UDP, SMTP, POP, uh, BTC, and other type of technologies like Ethereum fit exactly into this category. A lot of people make the misconception of classifying Bitcoin and these other blockchain technologies as commodities or currencies. And this is a very big problem, and we should stop doing this. As I go further into today, uh, I'll explain why. So in 2013, a group of us out of the islands formed a company called BIT with the sole focus of turning to central banks and having them issue their dollar, their fiat currency, on top of the blockchain. We actually became one of the first companies in the world to actually use the overlay protocol of Bitcoin. So BIT is a financial service company out of the island of Barbados that focuses on digitizing the three layers of the money supply chain. This means how money is put into society, how money operates, and how money works with regards to transactional layers. So what we created was an inter-central bank settlement system that allowed the central bank to issue their national dollar on the blockchain. BIT is responsible for creating the world's first digital fiat currency, the digital Barbados dollar. Now, what's really cool about this is when we first started uh, back in 2013, uh, as you can imagine, no central banks, uh, no financial authorities, and no monetary authorities really wanted to have a discussion on creating their national fiat on the blockchain. This was just an outlandish conversation. But through good process and procedure, uh, proving to the central bank that this can be done, and it's a far superior way of managing an economy's uh, M0 and M1 uh, supply chain, money supply chain, we slowly but surely were able to convince the central bank that this is a way that they can save their economy from cash management, cash accountability, seniorage, cash transportation, cash security. Our focus has now shifted to working with other central banks around the region. And as of a couple of weeks ago, we actually just signed a deal with another central bank, Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. And what this means is the ability to have a currency union driven by digital dollars. Eventually, we believe that all currencies will be digitized onto the blockchain. So this is the ecosystem, the three layers of the money supply chain. Uh, if you were to look at the far left, you can see the blockchain, the distributed ledger, the digital dollar standard, and the three layers. The first layer, issuance. When you're creating a digital dollar, someone needs to create it. Typically, this is done by a central bank during its monetary expansion policy. Below that is the integration layer. And this is how you interface the digital dollar into the existing ecosystem and turn financial institutions into digital cash account providers. These are typically your banks and your credit unions and other service providers who provide uh, the critical service of distribution of the money base. And then below that is the interface layer the ability to have this digital dollar function in society, meaning the mobile wallet, the ATM, the tellers, and the merchants. The reason that all three layers are important is you couldn't just go to a central bank and ask the central bank to create a digital dollar because then it can't function within society. It needs to have application. Now, what's important about this is you will notice that all three layers are based around the blockchain. That's a protocol. And that's something that we'll take forward. So over the years, we learned the importance and uh, the value of network protocols. Taking that value forward, uh, we were able to start forging a path towards looking at where these things are going to go and where we can find the, the maximum growth value within a society or within a, uh, a value system. 
So in 2017, a group, I, uh, a group got together and we formed the world's first protocol-driven mutual fund, which is quite an endeavor going between regulators and trying to tell them we want to form a mutual fund driven by crypto protocols. Uh, as you can imagine, that was quite a task. Uh, no regulators really wanted to take on that objective. But uh, through good logic and reasoning, we eventually were able to deploy um, uh, uh, the world's first uh, mutual fund that is protocol only. And I use the word protocol quite a bit, and I'll get to it in the end on why it's so critical. But we're passionate, about to, ent we're, we're passionate to enter the investment world and marry the, te the technical blockchain acumen with traditional investment techniques. So enter digital asset fund, the protocol fund. So if we were to look at the new asset classes emerging, uh, blockchain is that little bubble all the way at the end. And one of the things to pay attention to here is that uh, the emergence of digital assets is one of the most exciting developments that we've seen in the last, in the last couple of years. Uh, this is critical because uh, almost everything we can see, touch, and feel right now that has a central authority can now be placed on top of one of these protocols. And that's a pretty important thing to take note of. It means that the entire world around us will eventually be one of these new asset classes, driven by one of these underlying layers of being a network protocol. So some of the key differentiators uh, that make us stand out. Uh, we're protocol gurus. Uh, we've been around for a while. We understand this field. Uh, we have valuation experts uh, and professionals. So part of our team uh, is a managing director, uh, sorry, a former managing director of JP Morgan that actually is leading this fund. So we marry that traditional financial experience with modern uh, blockchain-based experience to look at how we can start leveraging this new asset class. Global connectivity, um, which is pretty important because one of the most critical things in this field is knowing where the deal flow is coming from, who the players are, and where they're going to be. For example, I'm from Barbados, but yeah, I'm here in Dubai. Why we love protocols. So in the internet growth phase, if you were looking at it, activity sites and apps like eBay and Amazon are akin to specific apps like wallets and gaming applications. Bit.com is one of those application layers. We took an application and built it on top of a protocol. Consumer interfacing apps such as browsers and IPs, which are this akin to gateways such as exchanges and cross-chain applications. Then you have network equipment, which is very similar to your mining equipment. Now, you'll notice a trend where the internet growth phase is almost following the blockchain growth phase. But one of the significant and fundamental differences is you can now invest in the protocol. That was never available before. Imagine being able to buy one of 21 million shares in TCP IP. And that's what you have right now. You have the potential to buy shares within one of the most revolutionary systems in the world that truly connects everything that we can touch, know, and feel. And that's what we have here with the uh, protocol layers like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and EOS, and the ability, the unique ability, to invest in the products, the real estate of the blockchain economy. So, one of the things that we look, some of the things that we look for, now, I usually make my presentations on the day of or the day before a conference. This was actually put together uh, in the last 24 hours. And it's based on the kind of audience in the room that we see. And one of the things that I saw yesterday was quite a few people pitching ICOs, uh, pitching their new investment strategies or their new business models. And um, one of the things that are uh, important to understand is what do funds look for or investors look for when they're investing in this new asset class. So, Team, technology, and governance. The team is critical. Having a stellar team that understand what they're doing, um, who are experienced, that's one of the first things that we look for. Of course, the technology layer. What, are th what is the ICO using? Is it building on the backbone of Ethereum? Is it using the overlay protocol of Bitcoin? Is it looking to employ RSK? And then, of course, the governance. Who is in control here? How does the control work? And who are the monopolies in, in place when it comes to the power position? The mining process and centralization protection, which is quite critical when understanding um, the decentralized process of the cryptocurrency world. Uh, is the protocol proof of work? Is it proof of stake? 
And is it going to be based on something that's going to be writing with something like merged mining on top of one of these technologies? The robust use case and focus. Is this something that has been done before, or is it unique? And what is the relative valuation of capital growth potential? Is this thing going to go to the moon, or is it just your average application? So um, one of the other things as well is liquidity, storage, and functionality. So the technical and executional capabilities with valuation and market-driven overlays, are, these are some of the things that fund managers look for when investing in ICOs. And just a key, um, some, a little advice for some of the crowd out there. Uh, if you want to raise capital for your ICO, uh, one of the easiest ways to do it is by going to these funds. Uh, these funds do quickly grab up pre-ICOs, and they typically do it in hordes, and they collaborate with each other. It's a very easy and, and smart way uh, to close your rounds um, with very few players. So in summary, we're 100% focused and passionate about the digital currency sector and asset sector. The emergence of a new, ass, new global asset class creates once in a generation investment opportunity. I truly believe there's never going to be a chance within our history to actually see an opportunity like this where we get to invest in the future of technology by holding on to something that has a limited deflationary principle. A focus fund on quality with game-changing protocols, proprietary investment process marrying technical and valuation expertise. So one of the things that we do is every time a, a, a token or a digital asset comes into our doorsteps, we actually have a matrix of many things that we measure against. And it's a proprietary matrix that is based on traditional investment techniques, but using new modern uh, solutions within the blockchain community. And then a highly motivated management team with a unique mix of top tier technical blockchain and financial market expertise. So, well, that's a disclaimer, we don't need to see that. So looking at Bitcoin and blockchain as a protocol layer system, you can invest a lot more than if you were just to focus on it as a currency or a commodity. And that's basically what I wanted to bring towards today, was to discuss the importance of not looking at Bitcoin or blockchain. For those of you in this room that are now starting off, that don't know what's going on in this community or this field, to stop looking at these asset classes as currencies or commodities. You're making a fundamental mistake. You need to start looking at these things and make them akin to the underlying layers that drive communication, information, and technology. Thank you.